Hi, this is your girl Annette, and we are here speaking with another fabulous volunteer. But before I introduce you to Paige, let me share a little bit about Peace Corps and our mission and our vision. So Peace Corps is a service opportunity for motivated change makers to immerse themselves in a community abroad, working side by side with local leaders to tackle the most pressing and challenging issues facing communities today. The Peace Corps mission is to promote world peace and friendship by fulfilling three goals. One, to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women. Two, to help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served. And three, which is what we're here doing today, is to help promote a better understanding of other people on the part of Americans. And today we have Paige who is going to share her experience with Peace Corps. Hi Paige. Hey Nat, thanks so much for having me. It is my pleasure. So where did you serve and when? So I was an education volunteer in a little town called Namakura in central Mozambique. Uh, from 2016 until 2018, so pretty okay. recent. Mm -hmm. And what was your program when you were in Peace Corps? I was a teacher, I was an education volunteer, so I, I taught English at my little secondary school. My first year I taught 12th graders, which was tough because they were my age, some of them, and a lot of them were bigger than me, but um, they, were, they were amazing. I really enjoyed it. It just took a little bit of learning. And my second year I taught eighth graders, which is a whole different kind of challenge, but also really fun. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed teaching. I learned a lot from my kids and they were one of my favorite parts of my service. That is awesome. Did you have any additional programs that you initiated with the children at your school? Yeah, I did. So um, I worked with my kids pretty closely in and outside of school, just pertaining to English alone. Uh, so it was a lot of tutoring, a lot of kids coming to my house and knocking on my door and saying, Professor Page, can you please come, come, let's work on English. So uh, that was always fun because I always had a smattering of kids at my house and we would be trading stories in Portuguese and English and reading things from magazines and just, you know, working on our skills. But that was a really nice way to bond with my students and watch them progress really rapidly uh, outside is, of the classroom. That um, is awesome. Did you, did you speak Portuguese before going? I didn't know, which was what probably what made teaching 12th graders so challenging because they were teaching me Portuguese while I taught them English, but uh, I did not speak Portuguese and now I am a much, much better Portuguese speaker than I started off uh, as being, but that was a great skill to come to get coming out of Mozambique as well. Let me, I'm trying to think if I remember, is, is como vai você Portuguese? Um, como vai is Portuguese. That was, that was, it was close. <laughs> Okay, okay. I don't, and is I to the bang? Yes, that's Portuguese. You got it. To the bang. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've had the, the, the pleasure of meeting a variety of people when I was in my Disney service who were uh, Brazilian, actually. Okay. I was asking, how do I say, how are you or welcome? And they taught me, come vai você, and to say, I to the bang. Got <laughs> it to one of their teachers coming in and the I to do bang and, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I say? Oh no, it was great. A very flirtatious way of saying, how are you and I'm well. <laughs> like, what's up? Yeah, very casual. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have any of those, those language pieces now that you- Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's so many of those little language pieces over and over again. I remember one time it was early, like this is such a small thing that stands out, but it was early in my service. And I was um, like, just, I loved my school director. I had a fantastic experience with the, um, the school that I worked with, which was really fortunate. You know, uh, every volunteer has a different experience, but my direct supervisor and the overall school director were super, super invested in the school and worked really well with my roommate and I and um, my psych mate. So that was really nice to have, but I was trying so hard to impress them in the beginning and just trying to make small talk with my very limited Portuguese. And, um, I was trying to say something about, it's very hot in my, like where I lived in Mozambique was one of maybe the two hottest parts of the country. So okay. I was trying to say something like, oh, I think I, I, I think I was saying, I, can't, I was trying to say I can't stop sweating, I think, which is like not appropriate to begin with, but that's what I was trying to say. And instead I said, I can't stop breathing. And no one said anything about it. Everyone was just like, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> and just little things like that. I would, I got very good at that face that people make where they're like, and you know, they don't know what you're trying to say, but they don't want to hurt your feelings. So. <laughs> yes. yes. I know that face all, all, all too well from my, yeah. from my service. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. in addition to, um, I guess, working as an English teacher and some of the other projects that you initiated as a teacher, what was one of the most challenging pieces of, of that initiative that you, you, you started? So I, I'll talk a little bit about one of the programs that I did outside of teaching. Uh, I, I helped, or I was the provincial coordinator rather, um, in Mozambique, you have provinces rather than states. So for a, a program called Redish, which in English stands for Girls in Education and Health and uh, Development. So it was a girls empowerment initiative and program where we focused on, um, you know, health health topics, education topics, um, just bringing girls together to learn about their bodies and community and resources they have, which is really great. Um, and every year you run workshops. You, in my province, it was like three, three to four workshops a year for girls all over the province, which was really amazing. Um, and I had been elected provincial coordinator maybe in my second month at site, but okay. I was meant to go to, um, the workshops of the provincial coordinator before me. But for a variety of reasons, the provincial coordinator before me um, had to leave country and go back to the States and terminate their service. So I got thrown into the fire without ever having been to one of these before, without ever having seen how I work with no one to like show me the ropes and barely speaking, the manual was in Portuguese, all of the resources were in Portuguese and I was in country for four months at that point. So. That was super challenging because it was everything from just getting getting the manual read, trying to imagine how to bring this kind of thing to life, not only in the town close by me, but in towns all over the province that I couldn't go to and how to get resources there. And then like hitchhiking all over the place to try and get the, try and get things printed and trying to get books made and t-shirts made and things like that, which is hard in the States, but to do in Mozambique is a logistical challenge. Like there was one time, I had, I think it was like 300 t-shirts that I had to transport and it was like a two hour oh. ride. And I was like, don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Who picked you up with 300 t-shirts? So I had like a small miracle happen where basically I was um, trying to get a ride into town and this group of uh, South African missionaries who were staying at the place where I was going to host the event pass by and they were like, oh, do you need a ride? We're going to the city. And I was, so I was like, yeah, sure. So I get in and they tell me they live at the place that I was going to host the event. They're going to spend the day in the city. And I was like, can you bring the t-shirts back for me? <laughs> so they, it was, it was the universe looking out for me because they picked me up, picked up all the t-shirts, brought them all over where they needed to go and drove me home. So <laughs> wow, nice. yeah, it was mostly luck, but <laughs> No, I, I like the, the intervention, like that. Oh, it was divine intervention. <laughs> if there was anything that you could change or enhance about your, your service, what would you do? Ooh, if there was anything I could, I don't think I would change anything about my service, but I think there are some things I would have changed about my mindset in my service, which I think would have made a big difference. Um, I am very type A very like I like to be in control of my situation I like to be able to plan things and Mozambique is I'm sure a lot of uh, a lot of places are but Mozambique is the kind of country where your neighbor could show up at your front door knocking on the door until you wake up at four o'clock in the morning because they need an egg like it is unpredictable everything's unpredictable and you, there's no personal space like nothing's in your control and it was really tough for me from the beginning to kind of adapt my mindset to being okay with that and to enjoying it as opposed to kind of getting frustrated with it all the time. Right. And once I did, you know, it's, it's a learning process forever, but once I did, service was infinitely more fun and more enjoyable. But in the beginning when there was that tension the whole time, it, I think it really took away from me being able to be present. Um, but it's, you know, it's an amazing skill to learn while, while you have the chance. Cause sometimes that kind of thing is tough to learn in the States when it you know, is. Come on time, so. <laughs> it is. We were we were sharing that some people um, wanted to extend their service because they were like their first year was basically getting to know their community, and that year they were really 
into whatever initiatives or projects that they had and like near the end it's like but we're, we're not done yet I just I just yeah. need a little bit more time and I'm like that typically works out because then your counterpart that you're typically working with has the opportunity to kind of see it through and hopefully you guys have built a relationship enough where they're keeping you in the loop or you know when you do have that time where you can leave you can kind of still sort of kind of hang around if you want to. Yeah. South Africa, actually, when I left, instead of just leaving, leaving. Uh-huh. I'm going to hang out for a Yeah, it's a nice to go west trip afterwards. But um, yeah. that actually makes me think of two different things. I think um, one of them was that I was, t- so I wanted to do Peace Corps since I was a kid. Um, I found out my friend's older sister had done it in China, and I was in fourth grade, and I was like, I want to do that one day. But the closer I kind of got to the age where I was able to, to apply I was just terrified of the two-year commitment I was like I I don't want to I like my home like I don't want to leave for two years (laughs) but in the end couldn't have been any other way I don't know how people do stints um and really I I do think a lot of the projects that I I was engaged with I think they mattered and I think they were important and I I learned a ton I hope my community in appreciated my experience there. Um, but I just don't think I could have gotten anything done in that first year alone with my language skills and yeah. my lack of knowledge about the people I was working with, you know? So I do think that two years is important. Um, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And also the other thing that made me think of was just, uh, my, I worked with both of my roommates and my site mate, um, to help open up and then eventually run and maintain and work with my community to get our community's first, library off the ground Um, yeah and it was amazing it was a ton of work it was a lot of working closely with all different stakeholders within the community and really getting like students involved getting teachers involved getting people to work at the library throughout the course of the day when we weren't around and um I've been gone since 2018 and then the most recent volunteers have been evacuated and I'm still in touch with people and that library is still going and that's, that's a great thing to hear about that is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in, in terms of you, so you did say that you learned about Peace Corps when you were younger mm-hmm. uh, by another teacher. And I, think, I think she was a teacher. I, I can't remember that far back, but. <laughs> well, okay, because that was just one of the questions. How did you learn about Peace Corps? So now in terms of you were doing like, what was the program, the girls program that you did? Ready? Ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. So in, in Namibia, it was called GAD and GAIN. So with Ready, is that something that you're continuing to do now here in the States? I'm actually in law school right now. So oh. there's not much time for anything outside of law school. <laughs> but um, I am trying to keep that work in mind as I move through um, as I move through my time in law school. So next semester, I'll be taking some more human rights oriented classes. And I hope to be able to incorporate that. Um, okay. Into my- and I did hear that you said you lived with two other volunteers. Yep. Yeah, so I was um, I, when they gave us a magic wish in Mozambique. And I was like, if you isolate me, there's no way I'm going to make it. So, <laughs> um, which is not true. I think I would have probably done my, made friends in my community and I think it would have been fine. But at the time it was scary. So I had a roommate that I shared my house with. And then we also had a site mate that was a health volunteer. Nice. And they, okay, and they were all Peace Corps volunteers, but they each had their own program. But you guys collaborated. So, my roommate was also a teacher. She was also an English teacher, or um, I'm sorry, a secondary school teacher. Okay. My roommate in both situations taught a different um, subject than me. So I taught English and they taught math or science um, in the community, which was nice because my first year, my roommate at the time, she did a huge science fair in the community, which was, mm-hmm. and I did an English theater project. So we had really nice complimentary things going on. And then the <laughs> health volunteer had you know, their thing going on at the hospital. So it was nice. Well, that, uh, so I served in 2001 to 2003 okay. and loving, absolutely loving the growth that you see in Peace Corps in terms of projects, coordination with the volunteers, the housing situation with volunteers and the accommodations that they've seemingly made in prov- making sure that the volunteers are not only good, but they, they are supported in completing their, their full two years. That is awesome. Yeah, I felt really, really heard, and I, I was really lucky. I ended up with a wonderful situation. Mozambique is also a very beautiful place. Oh, 
gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> no one knows about it. It's a well kept secret, but it is amazing that country. I hear Namibia is too. I'm dying to go. Mm -hmm. Mozambique, I, I did have the pleasure of popping in. Yeah. To Mozambique at the end of, of my service. So I got cruise just a little bit like oh I should have checked this out a little bit earlier, <laughs> like before my service but that's yeah. I have time when I go back and visit do you have any intentions of going back to visit Mozambique yes I would love I'm dying to go back and visit um I recently to my host family my host sister just had a baby and like my pseudo host family I just they just had another son and I like can't wait to meet those little children and I I first chance I get I'll be back so I'm really looking forward to it so if there are people who are interested in serving or have been thinking about or considering becoming a volunteer what is something you would like to share with them? Hmm. Well, I think first thing is that if you do decide to do it, it'll be the best thing you ever did. And you'll be so glad you did it. Um, and I think another thing that was super helpful for me, because it is challenging, and I'm sure everyone will tell you that it is, is before, you, if you decide to go, and if you decide, even as you're working through the application process, just really figure out what it is that makes you want to do it because that'll carry you all the way through. And I knew why I wanted to join. I knew what my reasons were for being there. And on my hardest days when people were like, you know, you're volunteering, like you could come home if you want to. I was able to kind of, <laughs> I was able to kind of fall back and be like, these are the reasons that I'm here. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I want to fulfill those things. And I think that's really important. That is a great idea because when you're calling home and you're like, oh my gosh, it was so high and nobody came into my project and I was sitting in the room by myself. Uh -huh. Like, come home. You uh, do my, I was like, you, my, your mom, you got to stop saying that to me. Like, <laughs> They're like, well, you know, your mom was like, baby, it's okay if you want to come back. And it's like, no. I, it's not okay. <laughs> I don't want to just quit and stop. Like, I can do this. It's just because I'm craving peanut butter or whatever. It doesn't mean I can come home. No. <laughs> Skittles. Skittles and starter. <laughs> and I was like, I keep in the corner, like, sucking on Skittles and suburbs, but it was like the best thing ever to have. Oh, yeah. Oh, when those boxes came. That was the best. Honestly, I miss appreciating things like that. Like, I miss... I miss appreciating going to a restaurant and like not worrying about whether they bleached my vegetables, you know, like a little thing like that. <laughs> and I, now I take it, I never think about that when I go out to dinner, eat now. <laughs> but it used to be the best, you know, I go to a restaurant and be like, oh, I can put a lemon in my water here. This is great. <laughs> How about mine is the opposite. I miss in my service that nothing went to waste and ever mm. was appreciated. Yeah. Time you spent, even if exactly. walking through your village, they were like, it was so nice to see you mm -hmm. to an event or them coming to an event. Thank you for sharing, you know, that information. It was good. Like I missed that exchange of volunteers with ideas and suggestions and networking. And it wasn't like, oh, you're copying off of me. It was like, doing yeah. this and this is working if you want to try it in your village i have some resources and some materials that i'll leave at the office and you can pick it up when you come to the office like that that was like the best thing ever. Yeah. and the level of creativity that you had to ensure that whatever initiatives your community or your counterpart came up with that you had the flexibility to say let's do it let's try it let's mm -hmm. do things yeah, I think both of those pieces that you talked about are so important. I think having the infrastructure, you know, something as simple as Google Drive, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just having a way to make sure that good ideas are kept and communicated um, and shared with different volunteers is super important because the things, I mean, it doesn't matter where you are, but Mozambique's a huge country and people think really differently, speak different languages, have different traditions. So what your counterpart in Niasa might come up with is totally different from what someone's counterpart in Maputo might come up with. So that was amazing. And I think what you touched on there with the support system you build with Peace Corps, there's no, I mean, you're just all family so quickly. Everybody's, and it's so cheesy to say that for anybody watching, like I am sure you're rolling your eyes, but Peace Corps, you go through some um, 
physical hardships, probably a lot of times wherever you serve as your body adapts to where you're going through and you'll get sick and you know, you, you miss home sometimes. And when you're doing that with these people, everyone comes to each other's rescue and they become home away from home for sure. And that is exactly correct. Paige, you, Paige thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So from leading health campaigns <clears throat> to boosting local entrepreneurship, to teaching digital literacy, Peace Corps offers a range of opportunities for having you make a difference in the country that you serve. If you need help finding the best fit, contact a recruiter with Peace Corps. All you have to do is go to peacecorps.gov. They have all the resources you need. Thank you again, Paige. Thanks so much.